We are looking at God's house, the temple that Solomon built, and seeing how it looks ahead to God's spiritual house that he built, which is the church, the body of believers. So tonight we're starting the actual building of the temple. So what's the first thing you do when you build a structure? You lay the foundation. So it doesn't matter how quick or clever you build a building, if the foundation is not sound, it will fall. And so let's look at the foundation of the temple. We see that in 1 Kings chapter 5, verse 17. It says, And the king commanded, and they brought great stones, costly stones, and huge stones to lay the foundation of the house. So the foundation of the temple was made out of stones. So what is the foundation of God's spiritual house? So it tells us clearly. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the foundation of the church. So inside a church, we may disagree on the paint colors, the carpet colors, what kind of food we're going to have at our next fellowship meal, but there's one thing that we must agree on, and that is the foundation of Jesus Christ. And so the foundation is made up of three different parts. So first of all, it is the person of Christ, so who he is. Second of all, it is the words of Christ what he has said and then third of all it is the work of christ so what he has done so the first part the person of christ so who is he so isaiah chapter 28 verse 16 says therefore thus saith the lord god behold i lay in zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone a precious cornerstone a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make haste so the temple foundation was made out of stone. And who is this stone, this foundation stone that God is talking about here? It is his son, Jesus Christ. So it said he was a tried stone. He was tried by the chief priests, scribes, elders, the Jews, King Herod, the Romans, and Pontius Pilate finally said, I find in him no fault at all. So he was tried. They tried to accuse him, but they could not. I find in him no fault at all because he was a precious stone. He was the precious, unspotted, unblemished lamb of God. And it said he was a sure foundation. So the foundation held up the whole building. So there's none but Jesus could hold up the weight of a single soul with all of its sins, much less the weight of all the souls with all their sins built up unto the house of the Lord. Okay, so then now let's look at Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 11. So this is Peter. He stands up boldly. He's preaching to the Jews. And he said, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God hath raised from the dead, even by him, that this man stand here before you whole. He said, This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. So, so the headstone of the corner is the most important piece. And Peter said, The one you crucified, God has raised him from the dead. So the one they put on a cross is now on a throne. The one that they mocked and made fun of, they will one day bow before. And the one they rejected, they will one day confess as Lord the glory of God the Father. And the stone that they refused has become the head of the corner. And God has given him the highest place of honor in his house. And then like the headstone, we see him in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. It says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone, and whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. And so as Gentiles, we used to be strangers and foreigners, but now when we believe on him, we become a part of his church. So the chief cornerstone connected the walls and it held everything together. Jesus connects Jews and Gentiles together as one in him, and holds us all together in God. So there's the first part of the foundation, the person of Christ, who he is, the tribe stone, the precious cornerstone, the sure foundation, the headstone of the corner, and the chief cornerstone. Then now the second part is what he has said, so his words. So look at what he said, Matthew chapter 21, verse 42. It said, Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So these builders, who were the builders? So the builders were the chief priests, the scribes, the elders, the ones over God's building, the religious leaders of the day. And these guys, they claimed to follow God. They taught the people the law, and they were supposed to be leading people to God to be a part of his spiritual house. But their hearts were so hardened, 
And they were so self-righteous that when God's son came, they totally rejected him. And so they would not allow him in their building. They would not accept him or his words. And God had provided them the materials. And he laid down his eye on the chief cornerstone. This was their missing piece. But they threw it out. And so realize who these people were. These guys knew the scripture down to the letter. They knew exactly that the Messiah would be born of a virgin, born in the town of Bethlehem, out of the tribe of Judah, a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Jesse, David. And so if anyone should have recognized him, it should have been these builders. But what does the Bible say? He came into his own, and his own received him not. Now, they didn't just kick him to the side. He said they assembled together and consulted how they might take him and kill him. And so here in Matthew, Jesus is quoting Psalm 118.22 to them. It says, The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. He said, Did you never read the scriptures? You men, you all that know the scripture down to the very letter. Did you never read? Do you not know? Do you not understand? So he's telling them, you all are the builders. I am the stone. You're going to beat me. You're going to spit on me. You're going to mock me. You're going to make fun of me. But one day, you will see me as the head of the corner, highly exalted with the name which is above every name. And so the church must be founded upon the words and the doctrines of Jesus. So what are some other things he said? John chapter 10, verse 30, he said, I and my Father are one. Teaches us there's one God in three persons, which is a foundational truth that the church must be founded upon. Another one is of repentance. Luke chapter 13, verse 3. He said, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. And of the way of salvation, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but my me. So these are the words the church must be founded upon. So if there's any group of people that call themselves a church that depend on salvation and eternal life for any other thing other than the blood of Jesus, they are not a church. So we sing a song. It says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And it says, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. It's hard to say those words without singing it. And we don't want to start singing here. <laughs> And so we have the person of Christ, who he is. We have the words of Christ, what he has said. And now the third part is the work of Christ, what he has done. And so let's look back to the building of the temple. So 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7 tells us, And the house, when it was in building, was built of stone, made ready before it was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron heard in the house, while it was in building. So they made the stones ready before they brought them into the house. And so Jesus, what was his work? He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of a virgin, came and walked this world, was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. So like those stones were made ready, Jesus was made ready before he came. And then when he came, look at what it says. So Isaiah chapter 53 Verse 7, it says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is done, so he openeth not his mouth. There was no sound of a hammer, axe, or tool in the house, and there was no sound from Jesus. He opened not his mouth. So much it said that Pilate marveled that he answered nothing. So the work of Christ, what did he do? Remember when the Israelites left Egypt, and they were traveling, and they set up camp at this place, and they had no water, so they were thirsty. God told Moses, go to the rock in Horeb, smite the rock, and water will come out. Moses went, he smote the rock, and water came out. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 says that rock was Christ. That rock was Christ. And so his work was, he went to the cross, he suffered, he shed his blood, he gave up the ghost. And then like Moses smote the rock, that Roman soldier pierced his side, and blood and water came out, just like that rock. They buried him, they put him in a tomb, but that's not it because 1 Peter chapter 2, 4 says, To whom coming as unto a living stone, he is a living stone. So God raised him up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. So he arose and he is alive today. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. So that was his work. Jesus, the foundation. Now in conclusion here, so how does this lesson relate to Christians today? So we also sing a song that says, How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. And then it says, I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld by my righteous, omnipotent hand. So we must stand on Jesus as our foundation. Everything we say, everything we do, 
and who we are should be traced back to Jesus as our foundation. And how does this relate to the world today? So what is the answer today to the falsehood in the lives of people and to the deception that is in the world today? So the answer is a foundation. They need a foundation to stand on. So that's why it's so important that we teach our kids, teach the kids at church, the, the person of Jesus, the words of Jesus, the work of Jesus. So when they go up to college and these professors try to push their liberal mindset on them and the world tries to deceive them and lead them into sin, they will say no because they will stand on their foundation of Jesus. And now if you are lost, how does this relate to you? So I love this verse. Zechariah chapter 13 verse 1, it says, In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. And that fountain is flowing from that pierced rock at Calvary. He was pierced for all, so that all that come to him by faith and receive one drop of that blood will be cleansed from all their sins. So that verse in Isaiah that we read, at the end it said, He that believeth shall not make haste. So you don't have to keep running around in this world because there is a foundation, a sure foundation that you can stand on, and that is Jesus Christ. It said, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ.